A West Michigan man is among the first in the world to try out the latest technology from Google called Glass. Okay, I'm gonna try to get my brother's class in on this. Okay, Glass, hang out with Ryan's class. That's Andrew Vandenhuvel of Spring Lake. He's an online physics teacher. Google sent him to Switzerland to see the Large Hadron Collider and share the experience firsthand with some physics students at South Christian High School in Kent County. Google Glass is basically a smartphone that you wear on your face like glasses. It does anything a smartphone does, email, text, live chat, and take pictures and videos, and it delivers it directly to the lens so that you can see it no matter where you are. And in studio joining us now, Andrew here, giving us an opportunity to try out the Google Glass. Just a short time ago, we were all checking this yeah. out when he came in the lobby. <laughs> You've had this for a couple of weeks now, and I'm sure you're getting a couple of double takes. <laughs> What's been the reaction when you're out and about wearing yeah. that? Yeah, sort of mixed. I mean, some people don't even notice it, right? But uh, a few times when I've had face-to-face -face conversations, people are like, you know, what is that on your face? But some people see it and they're like, oh, is that Google Glass? There's a huge online debate that basically erupted over the weekend about this new technology. Yeah. It's going to be in market maybe by the end of the year. Yeah. Tell us, I mean, has this improved your life or is it just <laughs> another accessory? Well, what's really interesting to me is this is like pre-commercial, right? This yeah. is like a prototype. Yeah, it's so it's going to be a, you know, a year before this is available to the public. So and that's, so as a glass explorer, I get to kind of experiment with it. So What's exciting to me, though, is to see where is this going, wearable technology, you know, wearable computing. Where is that headed in the next year, two years, or three years? I can tell you from my experience in just the past few weeks that this as a technology is going gonna, is gonna to stick around for sure. And again, here's some more video we were all checking out in the lobby. It is. It's very user-friendly. It's almost frighteningly user-friendly. <laughs> when you get it on, you get used to it. Yeah. Some of the things that you found, pros and cons. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Yeah. So, I mean, one of the cool things is how hands-free it is. So I can tilt my head up and just say, OK, Glass, take a picture. And I can snap your picture just like that, right? So completely hands-free, and it, it understands what I'm saying really well. I can do Google searches, directions, navigation, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do with a smartphone, you can do it just with your voice, which is pretty incredible. Um, in terms of like drawbacks, you know, it's like at some level, it's like one more screen in your life. You know, it's like, do we need one more screen in our life? But the thing I notice is that if I'm taking a video or something like that, my eyes are free to actually look around the world around me. I'm not staring at my cell phone or my or my digital camera as I'm taking video. Now, tell me about the application process just to be able to test out this device. You you applied to Google. You went through the hoops that you had to to be able to get this, but you had an ace in the hole <laughs> because you were you were connected up with what they're doing the Super Collider in Switzerland. Well, so this amazing thing happened, which is uh, Google wanted sort of ordinary people to try this technology out before they released it to the public. So they had at the end of February this "If I Had Glass" contest, to which I applied with just a tweet, right? At the same time, they were approached by this super conducting super collider people at CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, to have someone tour it with Glass. So Glass thought, the folks at Google thought, hey, let's get one of our explorers uh, to go tour this amazing facility. And they thought, hey, here's this guy who's a physics teacher, an online physics teacher, yeah. perfect candidate, let's send him out. You shared it with your class. We saw a little yeah. of that video. What did they think of it? They thought it was amazing. I'm actually going to visit them tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing the kids face to face after we had this amazing virtual experience. Absolutely. And again, it doesn't, uh, you, you paid for these, this pair of of glasses. That's Do you right. mind me asking how much? Yeah, so all the glass explorers have to actually purchase their copy, whether you're a celebrity or anybody else. So it's $1,500 for the Explorer edition. When it's available to the public, it'll be significantly less than that, maybe the cost of like a smartphone. Do you see some of the arguments about loss of privacy here, just with the way you were doing that? You, you know can take so people's funny? pictures without them knowing. <sighs> Las Vegas has already said I not know. allowed. I know. I think it's because you wear it on your face. People just like assume it's more invasive. But you know, it's like you for 100 bucks, you could go buy a little hidden camera and wear it on your lapel and take video all the time. This thing's not made to take video all the time. If you were to take video continuously, it would run out of battery in probably an hour and a half. Interesting. Yeah. New technology. Again, we brought this thing into the newsroom. Boy, everybody couldn't get out to yeah. the lobby fast enough to see what it was. Andrew Vandenhuvel with Spring Lake. He's an online physics teacher testing out brand new technology, Google Glass.